Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for Friday, the 22nd of July, 2016. Here in the Pacific Ocean, we have the leftovers of Estelle. This is no longer an issue, as if it ever was. We have Frank here, not too far off the coast of Mexico, but it's going to stay well away from the Baja and mainland Mexico here, so no worries. We have Georgette, which is also going to remain out over the open waters of the Pacific. So the parade of storms continues, and it won't surprise me if we have more developed down in this region over the coming 10 days or so. It's just a very favorable setup out there. Uh, hard to explain exactly what has happened and why this is going on, because remember, it was such a late start, and then boom, all of a sudden we've had all this activity. And as I will show you, it is definitely eroding the sea surface temperature, upper ocean heat content value through this region with all this activity out there churning up the water. We also have Tropical Storm Darby now in the Central Pacific Hurricane Center area of responsibility. And the center is forecast to track just to the north of the chain of islands out here in Hawaii. But of course the effects extend well away from the center. So it's possible to have some periods of heavy rain, increase in rough surf conditions, and some gusty winds. You can see uh, pretty good northeast winds coming in here with the low cloud deck. Limited convection with Darby here. The water temperatures through this region are marginal. And the thermodynamic makeup of the atmosphere, the amount of energy available, the upper ocean heat content, all of those things, the you know, mid-level moisture, you know, this area is just not that conducive to sustaining a tropical cyclone uh, and certainly not for strengthening. So there will be intermittent bursts of convection, and you can see that in the uh, animated satellite picture here, a little overshooting top right there. And uh, all of this activity headed towards Hawaii. And whether or not the center passes over the big island, etc., it doesn't really matter. The effects, again, are going to extend away from that center of circulation. Uh, luckily, the pressure is coming up about 1,002 millibars, according to the latest recon from what I saw recently. So, uh, again, mainly just a uh, nuisance, you know, common sense prevails. People will be quite all right in that area. This is the different track guidance. Somewhat of a divergence in the track here uh, with the system. Pretty big spread in the models. But overall, the more reliable global models, the Euro included, generally taking this close to, if not over, uh, the eastern part of the Hawaiian island chain. And of course, the intensity uh, downward trend for the most part. Again, the thermodynamic structure of the area that this is located in just not conducive for development. You got a couple of outliers here that suggest some intensification, but the general envelope of intensity is down. So good news for that area. Uh, they don't call it paradise for nothing, and we don't want anything coming along and ruining that moniker for that area, right? Uh, a wider perspective, and you can see with the colorized cloud tops here, some deeper convection with this, but you can also see there is some shear in the atmosphere and again the low cloud deck through here indicative of a cooler sea surface temperature state and the atmosphere above it not as conducive as you would have for example back over to the south and east where we have and, and that's the leftovers of Estelle right there this one's Georgette and here is Frank closer to Mexico and then more disturbances probably gonna try to congeal and get together for more mischief as long as everything stays away from land I guess there could be a hundred name storms out there and it wouldn't really matter much, would it? Taking all that energy out of the tropics and cooling the ocean off a little bit, and bothering nobody as long as Darby here doesn't become too much of a nuisance. I guess it's not too much of a bad thing. All right, so the last third of July, we are in that time period now. July 21 through 31 is the points of origin over the past hundred plus years. More development out in what we call the MDR, the main development region. But even more so than that, in the western Atlantic, and then of course the eastern Pacific stays busy this time of year, and it has been doing just that. Meanwhile, in the Atlantic, uh, I haven't even mentioned it because there's nothing really worth mentioning right now in the development side of things anyway. The sea surface temperature anomaly map updated yesterday, and you can see the cold area here in the Pacific. And you can also see, and this is along the equatorial region of course, 
but you can also see this erosion of the upper ocean heat content in the eastern Pacific and we might see a little bit more of that chewed away over here as Darby spins by but it's weakening so it won't have much impact but we have cooled the Pacific off in this region just a little bit in their sort of version of the MDR their main development region and by the way that shows up pretty nicely on this previous map uh, if you kind of box this off and you see where the MDR is again I'm just that you know it, it almost lines up with the latitude uh, aerial coverage I guess you'd call it uh, of the Atlantic you know latitude lines to latitude lines it's almost the same roughly 10 degrees north to 20 degrees north so you know it's just in the eastern Pacific side of things and if we look at that on here uh, that's roughly 10 degrees right there and there's 20 so yeah right in the MDR there uh, that worked out pretty good didn't it it's totally improvised this <laughs> it uh, is definitely cooler in the eastern Pacific MDR so there you go meanwhile in the Atlantic on the MDR it's uh, and why is this important by the way I keep make, bringing this up for active hurricane seasons where you have a lot of ace points and a lot of name storms and hurricanes usually the main development region through here needs to be warm while the rest of the Atlantic is colder and for the most part you can see it's pretty cold here in the central and you have this sort of ring of warmth around that um, and we're seeing that uh, for the most part but the western Atlantic very very warm the Gulf as well Caribbean I mean it's just amazing how warm temperatures have gotten in the western Atlantic but we don't want to ignore that main development region which is clearly with these pixels you can see in here uh, some of them on the warm side here the right hand side of the scale and in some cases uh, a half a degree to almost a degree Celsius above normal whereas the Pacific side has cooled uh, because of tropical cyclone activity cutting through there so that's going to start to matter here in about the next month or so I wanted to show you this as well a wider perspective of that same map here the Noah Nesdis uh, sea surface temperature anomaly and you see this large area of cold anomalies but I want to show you something interesting off the coast of uh, the Iberian Peninsula up here in the Northeast Atlantic and then extending down along the west coast of Africa past the Canaries and into the MDR you can clearly see if I just kind of outline this now this is definitely warm there's no blue sitting in here it might be a few yellows which is basically right at where it should be but there is no cold anomaly streaking through this area uh, and if we look at three years ago remember that hurricane season when it was thought to be very active and it turned out to be uh, head scratchingly inactive nobody really knew exactly what happened well just comparing the maps look the MDR and the area off of the Iberian Peninsula was cooling at this point three years ago so if we just look at like changes and contrast compare and contrast kind of thing yeah it's a lot warmer now than it was three years ago and so maybe something will change plus this is interesting too look at where the very warm anomalies were almost in the subtropics here uh, and there was very little warmth down here in the main development region whereas this year it's a little bit of a mix and match here cold in the subtropics warm in the western Atlantic but also very warm in the MDR so uh, I don't know maybe there's enough of a contrast between what we have here and what's going on down here that it could be a very active late August into September and beyond so we shall see the upper ocean heat content building is uh, pretty astonishingly as I can ever remember here especially in the western Atlantic off the southeast coast Caribbean very very warm with lots of energy available in the upper ocean several tens of meters deep that 80 degree line runs and the more of that that's available the higher the upper ocean heat content is so remember uh, again I'm seeing people talk about on different forums that well probably not going to have anything in July and the season's not going to be busy and it's been several years and I guess it's all over no more hurricanes uh, you know it's just kind of funny to read that because uh, we are right here on the scheme of things let me draw in yellow that'll help and if we look and you see right here this little peak 
is almost, I mean, I can't draw the straightest of lines on here, but you can eyeball that and see that this peak here back in June, all right, June is just slightly higher than this little bump here in July. And this is all climatology added up and you get this nice graph. So it's slightly busier over history in June, the middle part of June, than it is at the end of July. But then look what happens here about the mid part of July, I'm sorry, August, it really starts to spike. That's climatology, folks. That's why that's there. This graph exists for a reason. And right now, even at the end of July, activity is very, very slow, typically. And we're seeing that this year. A big part of it, yep, there's a lot of dry, stable air, warm air coming out over the tropics. But look at this. It's starting to break up. A lot more in the way of erosion in that Saharan air layer. A lot more convection over Africa. You know, it's just July 22nd. I think in another month, we probably would have had at least one more storm and probably our first in-season hurricane uh, by uh, August 20th. So, And then really after that, the odds start to really go up. And especially with all this activity in the Pacific, I think once that dies down, and the Atlantic takes over, it won't surprise me to see a very, very busy September. Not a prediction. Uh, I'm just saying, logically speaking, that's what I'll be looking for, and it wouldn't surprise me. I think it makes sense, all right? And hopefully everything else did today as well. So recapping, if you're in Hawaii, Darby will be a nuisance, but as long as you don't do anything dumb, it won't be a problem. So if you know anybody heading there or who is already there, let them know to watch out for that heavy rain, Stay indoors, enjoy the interesting weather, and be glad it's not another hurricane, a Niki, like we saw in 1992. Other than that, East Pacific staying busy and the Atlantic's quiet for now, but hey, you know what? When it gets busy, I think it's going to stay busy, and everybody better be ready. All right, have a great weekend ahead. Stay safe out there. If you're doing any outdoor activities, watch out for those lightning bolts and heavy downpours. This time of year, those tropical thunderstorms can be quite heavy. So keep an eye on that as well. Otherwise, things are nice and quiet in the tropics. And I'll be back with you again on Monday. I'm Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll talk to you early next week.